Lord Bach. The Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, our proposals for the future of social welfare law were contained in um, the response to the consultation paper proposals for the reform of legal aid in England and Wales made on the 21st of June. We announced that we would retain legal aid for the highest priority cases, included cases where a person is homeless or at immediate risk of homelessness, or to address housing disrepairs that pose a serious risk to life or health, and for community care cases. We have decided that legal aid will no longer be routinely available in other social welfare law matters, except for claims currently funded relating to the contravention of the Equality Act 2010. My Lords, I thank the noble Lord for his reply. A, a better name for social welfare law would be poverty law. Uh, often through CABs and law centres and private solicitors, uh, this legal aid goes to giving legal advice to the poor and marginalised on legal problems around housing, debt, employment and welfare benefits. The government, as we've just heard, intends to decimate this type of cost-effective legal aid. Does the noble lord agree with the reported remarks of the noble and learned Baroness Lady Hale uh, that these changes will have, and I quote, a disproportionate effect on the poor and most vulnerable in society? Does the noble lord also agree that this removal of access to justice, because that's what it is, is precisely what the late noble and learned Lord, Lord Bingham, meant when he wrote, and I quote again, the denial of legal protection to the poor litigant who cannot afford to pay is one enemy of the rule of law. My Lords, um, under our proposals, legal aid will be retained in the highest priority housing cases where a post person's home is at immediate risk for homelessness, senior, serious disrepair, unlawful eviction, orders for the sale of the home, and asylum support re cases relating to accommodation. Legal aid will be available in debt matters where a person whose home is at immediate risk. We will still be spending about 50 million a year on um, the, the, this section of legal aid. I have uh, read um, the, the comments of um, Baroness Hale. I have said from this dispatch box, that if you have a policy that is aimed at the uh, poorest in our society and you cut the budget, then of course there will be an inevitable impact. But in trying to develop this policy, we try to minimise that impact and focus our resources on those most in need. My Lord, would, no. my, my, would my noble friend, would my noble friend uh, care to take a trip down to... Would my, would my noble friend, Minister, like to take a short journey down to the Lambeth County Court and other comparable courts in London, Manchester, Sheffield and other cities, where he would find, if he spent half a day there, that the only way to get your house repaired is to sue the local council, because all other measures to obtain house repairs are not succeeding, and he would then perhaps realise that limiting legal aid to quite the extent which the government is ambitious to limit it is going a step too far. Well, I, I hear what my noble friend is saying. I, 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 the department was faced with some very hard decisions on a two billion cut in a department that, as I've said before, has only expenditure on four areas, on prisons, on probation, on legal aid uh, and on the, the uh, administration of, of justice. We have tried to focus uh, where we can on areas of need. I, I, I was very interested in, in the Guardian's editorial which were on legal aid, which was uh, said unjust cuts. But in the course of that editorial it said it has now been examined for the eighth time since the Children's Act 1989. And the noble lord knows very well that his own administration were looking hard at legal aid and how to cut it. The need for reform and for a more cost-effective system is undisputed. 
professional has acknowledged that too many of these cases come to court and welcome the proposals for greater use of mediation. Change is, need, is needed. These are savings that have to be made. That under the title of unjust cuts. The fact is that those are the realities that we're facing. My Lord, my Lord there is considerable disquiet among welfare law agencies about the impact of the withdrawal of legal aid from welfare benefits law at the very time when that law is going to be changed significantly. Could the Minister therefore please advise the House as to what steps the Government will take to ensure there is adequate independent advice and assistance for all those affected by the welfare reform legislation? Yeah. Yeah. The hope is and the, in, the, the intention is that we can give um, further assistance <laughs> to those who are giving advice because one of the analyses we make of this area of law is that it is um, not necessarily legal advice, and this goes partly back to uh, what the question my noble friend has asked, whether this is uh, areas where it's precisely ne legal advice uh, uh, that is needed, um, uh, or whether the, there are alternative uh, forms of advice uh, to enable people to um, manage their way through these, these difficulties. Um, these problems have been raised with us and we will continue to keep them under review. I, I take the point that the noble lady has made. Will my noble friend kindly think again about this whole issue because it, it really is a case of penny, penny wise, pound foolish. The Citizens Advice Bureau who deliver help to 2.1 million people a year and are mainly volunteer manned, they reckon that for every pound of government subsidy they save the Exchequer £8 with regards to welfare advice. How can it conceivably make sense, therefore, to go ahead with cutting their, uh, their, their subsidy from £27 million this year to £7 million next year? My Lords, um, the, um, perhaps I could answer both that question and the, the question the noble ladies just posed by saying that the Government does recognise the importance that um, played by not-for-profit uh, organisations and by um, citizens and advice bureaus. We are working with the sector and across government to ensure that the implementation of government reforms help to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of advice services available to the public. Um, my uh, right honourable friend, the Lord Chancellor, <laughs> will, I hope, by now have announced in another place that we will be providing additional funds of about £20 million in this financial year to help achieve this and we will continue discussions with CAB uh, and uh, not-for-profit not for organisations about future funding. Baroness Thornton. My Lords, I beg leave to ask questions standing in my name on the order. Thank you. My Lords, our commissioning proposals will establish a national NHS commissioning board providing oversight of commissioning in the NHS and directly commissioning some services, including specialised services.